Well, welcome and thanks everyone for, for joining today and coming together. Excited to share a little bit about the things we've learned along our journey and certainly excited to hear what others have to share. Iron Range Engineering started in 2009. It was an adaptation of the Alborg University model. So it's nice to go right after them and show what we've done to build, build off their work. Specifically, one of the things that we looked at was student motivation and felt that if we're looking at changing the future of engineering education, especially getting broader participation in the United States in the field of engineering, we really need to take a close look at what we are doing in regards to student motivation with their learning. And our development focused quite a bit around the work of Desi and Ryan and self-determination theory and really looking at the three needs of motivation according to them around autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And autonomy is really where students especially are the agent of one's own life. They've got that control over, over their choices and destiny. Competence is where they're really seeking to develop mastery, really deepening their experience. And relatedness with self-determination is really looking at they're willing to interact with one another, being connected with one another, and really developing an experience of caring for one another. And so we talked about the session, talked about interdisciplinary. This becomes very important as you we have that relatedness as we look to work across disciplines. So for our work, we took these three elements. They not only were our motivation, but then we also used them to, as the framework for the curriculum development. And so we operationalized this language and switched it to autonomy being about student choice over their curriculum, competence really about optimal challenges and the learning that goes with that, and relatedness really became about the social interaction, the social fabric that we were creating within the program. And do, I've got colleagues that will explain each of these three and to speak to student choice will be my colleague, Ron Alsa. Thank you, Bart. Um, we look to give students the opportunity to make choices wherever possible because we find when they get to make even a very small choice, their interest and their attention and their motivation uh, towards their learning activities goes way up. I'll start at the six o'clock and go clockwise. Uh, engineering fundamentals are a huge part of what we do in engineering. Uh, we have an exam every semester where the student is responsible for every one of the engineering principles they've ever learned. And for any particular student, there might be 60 or 70. We've got one of those exams going on tonight. We let them choose which 30 do you want to be examined from out of the 70 principles that you are responsible for. So an opportunity to make a choice. Uh, moving around the clock here, our students all give TED Talks and they get to choose which, uh, what is the topic of their TED Talk each semester. Next up, we work on design teams, just like the Allborg model. We give students the opportunity to select their top three choices from the design menu every semester. And we do everything we can to get them into their top choice or their second choice. Every week we do journals, uh, three, about 20 minute long journal entries that students must uh, write about, reflecting on and processing their learning. We, we uh, um, prompt the first two of the journal entries, but we let them pick a topic for the third journal entry, an opportunity to make a choice. And we even go so far as we're giving holiday gifts this year. And we gave the students the choice. Would you like a coffee mug for your holiday gift, or would you like a travel mug for your holiday gift? Again, getting them to make the choice and buy in. Next up on Optimal Challenge is my colleague, a student engineer, Gabby. Hello, so as a junior at Iron Range Engineering, one of the ways that I've been challenged to think like an engineer is PSYOPs. PSYOPs is an exam that we do, and it stands for Creative, Innovative, Open-Ended Problem Solving. Uh, we do it each semester. Mine was this past Wednesday. And students are tasked to solve an open-ended engineering problem using the knowledge and skills that we learn in our classes. So for my exam, I was tasked with developing a boiler heating system in my home and adapting it so that it could heat and attach to car garage. And what I did was I defined the objectives, I identified my constraints, and I researched the system and then I drew these diagrams and applied equations from my fluid courses 
uh, such as the Darcy Weisbach equation. And so then for my exam, I got to meet with two professional engineers and I explained my process and they let me know uh, what I could do to do better and what was good. And so PSYOPs really allowed me to use the design process to solve an open-ended problem. And it gave me confidence in applying calculations from my classes to a real world engineering context. And I found this to be especially motivating, especially as a student, because it allowed me to see the connection between what I learned in my classes with the systems that are in use all around us. So PSYOPs is a great way for us to achieve an optimal challenge for students while motivating them to become the engineer they want to be. And next, I'm gonna turn it over to our director, Christine. Thank you, Gabby. And I'll be talking about the social interaction piece of self-determination theory. And at Iron Range Engineering, we are very intentional about how we do this because we want to create a supportive and collaborative working environment, not a competitive one. So there are a lot of different aspects to this in a wide variety of range. Uh, the first one is all of our teams. So we have project teams just like Alberg, and all of them are set up in project rooms. It creates a collaborative open space for students to communicate with one another. We also have lunch speakers, a variety of different uh, engineering professionals come in and talk to our students about what life is like on the other side of school. And what's unique about this is our project teams are assigned a lunch speaker and they have to determine what the menu is and actually have to cook the meal for the rest of the student body. We are on a first name basis. All of our students and our faculty and instructors know each other on a first name. And along with that, our faculty offices are always open. So we have an open door policy. We understand that students are going to have questions at any given time. And so they can quite literally walk in and ask faculty questions and for help. In light of COVID, we have something called an IRE, standing for Iron Range Engineering Student Lounge. It is a Zoom link that has either a faculty member or another student on it all day long, and students and faculty can uh, bop in and out and say hello so that they have a, um, a communications channel and don't feel so socially isolated. Our program is also vertically integrated. So we have upper division students which is the third and fourth year of engineering, be facilitators on a lower division, which is first and second year engineering students. So on lower division project teams. And then on the upper division teams uh, that I talked about earlier, just like Alborg, uh, they are vertically integrated. So first semester third years are with second semester fourth years. And then lastly, our graduates, as they get their first uh, full-time job offer, we have a very large bell that came from a locomotive on the Iron Range. And when they accept their first job, they get to ring the bell. And it becomes a community celebration. It's not just the celebration of the student, but also the celebration of the community. So everybody comes into our largest room, all of the students, faculty, and staff. Uh, the graduating student gets to talk about what their job is going to be, and then they ring the bell loud for everybody to hear. And what's very fun about this is first year students get to see the culmination of somebody else's work and gets to see where they could possibly be in four years. And so it helps to promote that intrinsic motivation. And now I'll turn it back over to Bart for the summary of the self-determination theory at IRE. Thanks, Christine. Well, just in summary, just this is a um, satellite program from Minnesota State University, Mankato. I saw there's a question there about how many students. There are approximately 100 students first year through, through their fourth year, so about 50 students in upper division. And that size program and kind of a satellite modes allowed us to really explore a lot of new learning approaches, but also to help the economic activity of our region and making sure there are adequate supply of engineers to, to meet the industrial needs of, of our region of, this, of the state of Minnesota. So one thing we'd like just to leave you with is there are other aspects of the program, but we really feel that the self-determination theory is, is an important framework for us to consider in engineering education. If we really are looking to diversify the engineering field, we're looking to engage a broader set of students in that work, really have to look at what motivates them to enter the field of engineering. And with many of the things here shared by my colleagues, 
what are the experiences within the curriculum that keep them in the engineering education pathway and ensuring that we've got a strong workforce for the future. Um, so we think the framework here has reason for broader uh, consideration in the engineering field. I think it's got some real intellectual merit in terms of what we can do with the future of engineering. So thank you uh, for the chance to share. We look forward to the further discussion and John, I'll turn it back over to you at this point.